This is example number 322, and we have a rotating shaft with unbalanced rotor. A hollow steel shaft of length 100 inches with an outer diameter of 4 inches and an inner diameter of 3.5 inches carries a rotor of a turbine weighing 500 pounds. And at the ends, we have two bearings, so the shaft is free to rotate. The clearance between the rotor and the stator is 0.5 inches. The rotor has an eccentricity equivalent to a weight of 5 pounds and a radius of 2 inches. A limited switch is installed to stop the rotor whenever the rotor touches the state. If the rotors operate at resonance, how long will it take to activate the limit switch? We will assume initial displacement and initial velocity equals zero, and we will analyze the system working in resonance. The first thing we will do is find an equivalent system that we can get the equation of motion easily. They tell us that we have a shallow steel shaft of length 100 inches and they tell us that the rotor is located at the middle of that shaft. We will take that shaft as a simple support beam. And we will find the equivalent constant of the spring for that beam. We are also given the weight, and the weight is located in the half of the beam. So we will take that and if we go to our tables, we know that the equivalent constant for that type of beam is 48, the Young modulus times the area moment of inertia divided by the length Q. The, since this is a cylindrical hollow shaft, the area moment of inertia is pi over 64, the outer diameter to the fourth minus the inner diameter to the fourth. We are given all those dimensions. Let's write them down. The length is 100 inches, the outer diameter is 4 inches, the inner diameter is 3.5 inches, and the weight is equals to 500 pounds. We are so are given that the material is steel, and you can look it up that the E modus for steel in US uh, units is 3. 30 times 10 to the 6 pounds over inch square. Now let's calculate the area moment of inertia. I will plug in the numbers, which is 4 to the 4th minus 3.5 to the 4th, 5 over 64, and that gives me a value of 5.2 inches to the 4th. Now I calculate the equivalent constant for that spring, which is 48 times 30 times 10 to the 6 times 5.2 divided by 100 cubed. That gives me a value of 7,488. I'm not writing all the decimals, but I'm keeping all the decimals for further calculations. The weight is 500 pounds, therefore I have to find the mass. I have to divide it by the gravity. Be careful that when you divide by the gravity, you have to use the gravity in terms of inches over second square, which is 386.4 inches over second square, and that gives me a value for the mass of 1.294 pounds second square over inches. And with these two values, I will calculate the natural frequency of the system. Remember that the natural frequency is defined as the square root of the equivalent constant for the spring divided by the mass. And we have that this gives us a value of 76.07 radians over second. Now let's get the equation of motion of the system. 
this is a very well known equation for us at this point and it will be the mass of the system times the acceleration which is x2 dot plus the constant of the spring which is the equivalent constant of the spring times the displacement that will be equals to the harmonic force in this case it's a unbalanced harmonic force the force the magnitude of that force is me omega squared the system is working in resonance that's we are told that in the wording of the probe therefore we know that r is equals to one And therefore, omega is equals to omega n, which is 76.07 rate. When we are working at resonance, we know what is the response of the system. And I can go back to the formula sheet to show you where we can get that equation. The formula sheet that we will be using is the one for harmonic motion. And here we have is for vibration, right? And the case that we are working is for resonance, mm -hmm. where this is the response for a harmonic force. And the specific case is the rotating imbalance. And as you recall, in the next page, we can see the force for a rotating imbalance if sub zero becomes m e omega squared. And the response is, as I said, the one for resonance. So let's write that down. The response for resonance is if sub zero over the constant of the spring equivalent times omega n times t divided by two sine on omega n t. And as you, we said, f sub zero is m e omega squared. If we calculate that f sub zero, m is equals 5, e is equals 2, and omega squared 76.07 squared. That gives me a value of 149.76 pounds. The problem says that we have a limit of 0 0.5 inches. So we calculate that x max as the force of f sub 0, which is m e omega squared, divided by the constant of the spring times omega nt divided by 2. Let's plug in the numbers. The omega squared, omega n is 76.06 divided by 2 and times. That time is the one that I want to find. And if I multiply all these numbers, I get a value of 0 0.7607 times, and that has to be less than 0 0.5 inches. So the time is equals to 0 0.6502. That's the time that will touch the stator. If we graph this response, it will look, look some, something like that. You see that it grows without bounds. And the red lines are the limit of 0 0.5 inches. And that's where it touches the stator. And that's the time where it reaches that amplitude. And this is the solution of this problem.